Are your bones quietly absorbing plastic fragments that weaken their structure and raise your risk of fractures? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're examining new evidence that microplastics aren't just in your air, water, and food. They've been detected in human bone tissue, where they disrupt cell activity, trigger inflammation, and undermine strength. I focus on natural health, and I'm Alara Skye. A recent narrative review in Osteoporosis International analyzed 62 studies and linked microplastic exposure to skeletal disruption. You're looking at accelerated bone resorption, impaired formation, and changes to the trabecular network that supports strength and flexibility. To ground this, you first need to know how these particles behave in bone. Laboratory data show reduced cell viability, faster cellular aging, and a shift in bone marrow stem cells toward osteoclast development. That tilt speeds bone breakdown and destabilizes the balance you rely on to maintain density. Animal studies back this up. After exposure, microplastics were found within bone and marrow with altered microarchitecture, reduced growth, and impaired trabecular formation. Some models also show disrupted gut microbiota and lower white blood cell counts, pointing to immune imbalance that can reverberate through your marrow. Researchers highlighted accelerated osteoclast aging as a driver of deformities and dysplasia, and in severe cases, halted skeletal growth. While mechanical details are still being mapped, the pattern is consistent. Circulating particles reach bone, interfere with metabolism, and blunt regeneration. Scientists are now testing how this translates to bone strength in practice, focusing on sites like the femur to quantify mechanical resilience. The aim is to determine whether microplastics are a controllable environmental factor, contributing to the projected rise in osteoporotic fractures by 2050. Bone isn't the only target. Plastic fragments have been detected in the bloodstream, confirming systemic circulation. In the brain, where shard-like nanoscale pieces have been found, embedded in neural tissue, and in placental tissue and breast milk, demonstrating prenatal and early life exposure. Findings extend to the heart and arteries, with polymers identified in cardiac tissue and nanoplastics embedded in atherosclerotic plaques associated with higher inflammation and cardiovascular risk. Particles have also been found in lungs, kidneys, liver, and male reproductive tissues, where they can cross protective barriers and disrupt normal function. A key context point is ultrafine combustion particles, or UFPS. These are smaller than microplastics, dominate the air by particle count, and are inhaled in the tens of thousands with every breath. You're exposed to them continuously, and because they reach deep into alveoli and pass into circulation, they deliver a much greater total particle burden than microplastics. UFPS generate oxidative stress, inflame vessel linings, alter coagulation, and are strongly linked to cardiovascular harm. Evidence for micro and nanoplastics is still emerging, but overlap exists. Nanoscale plastics can behave like UFPS, cross the same barriers, and interact to amplify toxicity. With exposure this pervasive, researchers are exploring ways to help your body eliminate microplastics. One approach is cross-linked psyllium, which in water treatment experiments extracted more than 92% of common plastics. Because it swells and forms an adhesive gel, it may have future potential in the gut to capture particles before absorption, though this remains investigational. Chitosan is another candidate. In animal work, a chitosan-enriched diet increased excretion of ingested polyethylene microplastics and appeared to help remove previously absorbed particles. It's a shellfish-derived fiber, so you should avoid it if you have shellfish allergies. Certain probiotic strains have shown binding effects as well. In a 2025 animal study, Lactica cybacillus para kc D T66, and Lacti plantibacillus plantarum DT. 88 formed biofilms that trapped small polystyrene particles, suggesting a strategy to pair probiotics with fibers to sweep fragments from your gut before they cross into blood. Your liver contributes to clearance too. 
Kupfer cells capture circulating particles and route them into bile for elimination. Investigations are underway into ur-sodioxycholic acid and taurosodioxycholic acid to improve bile flow and support movement of trapped particles out of the liver. Researchers are also testing whether enhancing autophagy can help cells process synthetic debris. Rapamycin and spermidine have been studied for stimulating this cleanup pathway, restoring mitochondrial function, and reducing oxidative stress after microplastic exposure in lab and animal models. Even as these strategies develop, the most practical gains come from lowering daily exposure. You can choose natural fibers like cotton or linen to reduce synthetic shedding. Use a HEPA purifier to capture fine indoor particles and filter your drinking water to the micron level. If your tap water is hard, boiling it for five minutes can remove up to 90% of microplastics. Heat accelerates plastic breakdown, so stop microwaving food in plastic, avoid pouring boiling liquids into plastic containers, and switch to glass or stainless steel for storage and reheating. Replace plastic cutting boards and utensils with wood, bamboo, or stainless steel to cut foodborne fragments. Dust and vacuum with tools that capture, not recirculate, fine particles. A sealed vacuum with a HEPA filter and a slightly damp microfiber cloth minimize airborne spread. In personal care, skip products with plastic microbeads and look for natural exfoliants and non-plastic packaging. The skeletal system was once assumed to be insulated from environmental debris, but the presence of microplastics in bone shows how far these particles can penetrate. When you reduce the inflow and support targeted elimination, you lower the inflammatory and oxidative pressures that destabilize bone remodeling. Here's your challenge. Choose two exposure reduction steps and one elimination support from what we discussed today. For example, stop heating food in plastic, boil hard tap water for five minutes before drinking, and replace a plastic cutting board with wood. Put them in place for the next seven days and note the changes you can sustain long term. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.